Hi, and welcome to Acorn Knits. My name's Natalia. I'm a knitter based in Sydney, Australia. And if this is your first time viewing, welcome. And for anyone who's returning, welcome back. It has been a little while since I last posted. Uh, so I hope everyone had a lovely Easter or Passover for whichever one you celebrate, if you celebrate either. It's been a while. And the reason for that is I quit my job. It was quite a long notice period I served out. It was two months, um, but they only found a replacement for me in the last few weeks. So in the last about two weeks, I did some really intense training. And for me, that completely knocks me out. I don't know if anyone else feels this way about training someone else, but for me, I'm someone who's super, super quick and I just want to get things done and bam, 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 bam. And so when you have to train someone, you really have to slow down. And for me, even slowing down to a kind of normal pace feels sluggishly slow, let alone having to slow down to a training pace. So that's pretty exhausting having to, you know, take it down to that level. And at the same time, everything that you do is, especially when you've been doing something for a really long time, you know, whether it's knitting or a job or whatever, it's just automatic. You don't even think about what you're doing. All these things that I would do, all these processes, which there were so many of, I had just become accustomed to. I had to stop and be really conscious of explaining to the person I was training about what to do and why and, it was really tiring. I would come home after, you know, an eight hour day and I would just flop on the couch. I wanted a glass of wine and I would watch The Sopranos and that's all I could do. I didn't have the energy to knit when I got home. I would do a bit in the morning, but as a result, I didn't have a really a huge amount to catch you guys up on. So now I do though. <laughs> um, so my last day was the Thursday before Good Friday. So I'm officially a free woman. I haven't got anything to go to, but I think I just want to take the next few months just to kind of chill out and take it easy and just do things that I really, really love because it's we don't really get that many opportunities to do that. And I'm fortunate that I'm able to, so that's exactly what I plan to do. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk works in progress. So I will start with the set of style sweater because that's the one that's been on the needles for the longest but I finally feel like it's made some decent progress in the last, probably over Easter is where I feel like I really chipped away at it. So I'm officially off Body Island, which is such a relief because it felt like I had not reached that color work portion around the yoke. It was just endless amounts of stock in it. I was getting really demotivated, but I want to give it to my father for his birthday, which is in early May. So the clock's ticking and that's really what kind of gave me a kick up the butt to start focusing on it more and kind of not just put it to the wayside. So as a result, this is where I'm at. It's huge. I've got it on strings. So the black string that you can see hanging up is the string it's held on. I'll just hold it up. There we go. So there's the color work section around the yoke. It is in complete Natalia tradition covered in cat fur. <laughs> if I do a close up, I'm sure you'll see all of it. At least from a distance, I can hide my shame. But let me fold it in half so you can maybe get a better view. Because it's stock in it and I haven't bound off, uh, it's just wanting to roll on itself. There we go. And there we go. There you can see the start of the round. Where it. Maybe if I move it to the other side, it's a bit prettier. So there we are. Now I've never constructed a sweater like this before, so I wonder if anyone else um, who's watching has and if they can share their experience. So it's really unique, this construction. It's literally just a tube, pretty much, of stockinette. So it's just a giant body sock, literally a body sock. And this is gonna be where you have the shoulders. So I assume you're gonna probably do some kind of like Kitchener stitch or something like that to, to um, what do you call it? I was going to say fuse these together, seam these together. And then you'll have the collar around here, but I believe you cut into it to create the collar. And there's no holes for the arms. It's completely in the round, so I'll need to sneak the sides to attach the sleeves to, which is a little bit anxiety provoking. <laughs> Because I've seen people who've steeked for a cardigan, so they steek down the middle. Let me sit up properly. So they steek down the middle, but at least that's sort of opening something up 
and then you're just attaching a button band to it. This seems a little bit scarier to perfectly get the top of the sleeve to then match in to the armhole. I may just be worrying about it more than I need, it's just that I've never steeped before and to do something where you're attaching a second work into it seems really intimidating. But, I mean, all I can do is try, so that's what I'm going to do. And then speaking of sleeves, I've started one of them. So once again, it is a bottom-up construction, so I start with the cuff and work my way up. So it's just a lice pattern here with some increases going up uh, every few rows. And then once that gets to a certain portion, then I start um, another colour work section around the sleeves and then that's joined into the body. So that's how I'm going. It's feeling like it feels like it's a possibility to finish it now. <laughs> I think before it felt like I'd been knitting on it for so long and I felt like I hadn't really, not that I hadn't made progress, but it wasn't as noticeable as if you're doing, you know, especially I feel, okay, to go back. Now, I don't know if anyone else feels like this, but for me, if I'm just knitting stockinette in the round, I lose motivation really, really quickly and I feel like I'm not making progress and I just get bored, really. I mean, I know that I could get a progress marker and put it in at my last row and then keep knitting and see how far I've gone from there. But I think it's that motivation of seeing what's next, which is why it's funny, like this felt like it took me an eternity. I felt like this never ended. And then as soon as I hit this portion, now obviously it's less knitting here than it is for here, but this went by so quickly. I think because it's that motivation of, oh, I'm almost finished, you know? If I just, you know, if you're halfway through here and you're like, but I've just got seven more rows till I get to the top, then it's, you feel really motivated to knit those seven rows because you want to feel a sense of completion. And, um, and with stockinette, I feel like I really don't get that. As in plain stockinette or even something that's a, like a very repetitive pattern like this with the lice, I just feel like when there's something that you don't feel like you're aiming towards or when that end goal seems so far away, I feel like it's harder to push yourself. Um, whereas anything with color work, especially with, you know, striped sections, because it's sort of like, oh, I just want to finish this stripe before I start the next one. And then when you get to the next one, it's like, oh, well, I've already knit a few rows. I can knit a few more. And as a result, I feel like those projects really fly off the needles a lot faster, which is why as much as I'm trying to be a, stock, a sock knitter, I'm just really not. Maybe if it was the right pattern or something like that, but just a plain sock, it just, I find them so difficult to knit, which is funny because they're so small and they should be very satisfying because they're quick to finish, but I just don't feel that way. Um, so anyway, I've definitely learned from doing this pattern that I do need something that has more interest in it. Um, maybe changes like techniques or stitch pattern or whatever more regularly. So Stephen West's Shawlography, I have my eye on you. I think that would be a very good option for that. And speaking of shawls, I finally made a bit more progress on my Moody Fairy. I finished the third section. <sighs> so I've got the cabled section here and this is my first time doing cables on such a large scale. I'd done cables on socks and I'd done them on a, um, I did a test for a hot water bottle cover and I didn't mind them in that. I think also the yarn was a bit heavier and it was a looser gauge. This is quite a tight gauge and I hated, hated doing the cables for this. It was like, it happens every fourth row so I feel like I'd get to that fourth row and I'd see the cables and just think like, oh, I just don't, just don't have it in me to do it. So then I'd put it down and be like, you know, I'll do it for another day. And then I'd go to pick up my Moody Fairy and be like, oh, I should do a bit more on that. And then I'd pick it up and be like, oh, God, it's the cables. No, God, please, no, 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 no. So it really slowed me down this section because I kept putting it off because I hated doing the cables. And actually, I timed myself for how long it's taken me. One second. But one row over half an hour. Now, given it is more than 300 stitches, and that was me working pretty diligently, like consciously trying to knit, um, rather than if I was not trying to tie myself, I always would do it a little bit slowly and I would stop to get a drink of water and I would kind of have these breaks um, to try and break up the monotony. So I'd say 
probably on average about 45 minutes to knit run one row. So it was getting pretty tiring of doing it. But I wanted to persevere and I was like, no, I will not let the cables beat me. And I didn't. So I finished this section, although I did look ahead in the pattern. And there's more cables, so I can get through it. It's okay, I'll get through it. And you know, I don't want to play favorites. If you're saying I play favorites, you're wrong. I love all my children equally. I don't care for Joe. I do feel bad. I don't want to hate on the cables, but I just, just not about it. And it could just be that the tension's so tight that I find it, um, having to move them around. It just, I already am a pretty tight knitter. Plus then you add really fine needles and a tight gauge. And I think it's just not pleasant to knit cables in that manner. But I mean, it was a learning experience as a result of it. I'm definitely very glad that I didn't end up knitting the cardigan for my boyfriend's father out of like a cabled cardigan, which was my original plan. I think I wanted to do the, mm. it was by, oh, I'm, lo I'm forgetting the, the pattern name as well as the designer's name, but I'll put a photo in of what I was planning to do. And I am so glad I didn't because I wouldn't have completed that and I would have felt really, really guilty about it. So God bless Jared Flood and the Ranger cardigan, because that was a perfect, perfect pattern and it fits him really, really well. Which actually, speaking of which, so I did give it to him for his birthday. I knit it in time. And when I gave it to him, we were the first to arrive, uh, my boyfriend and I. And so I was just like, oh, here you go. Like, I'd like to see you try it on. And he was like, no, 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 no. I'll wait till everyone else arrives. I was so nervous because I thought, oh my God, if this doesn't fit him well and he wants to try it on in front of everyone, I will be mortified if it's, if it looks terrible. When everyone else arrived, he tried it on and I was really, really nervous, but it looked great. It was a perfect fit. I would say perhaps it was a little bit longer than I would have liked it to be. And that's because I think because it was a bottom up construction, as I got to the part where, you know, let's say it was 40 centimeters or 48 centimeters when I hit the underarms and I kept knitting, I feel like all that extra weight on it as I kept knitting up and added sleeves weighed it down. And so I feel like the entire cardigan drags more than I had intended it to. Not a huge amount. I mean, maybe if it was five centimeters shorter, I think it would have been perfect, but he didn't say anything about it. So I think he likes that extra length and thank God the, um, the sleeves actually fit really well. They didn't end up being sausage casings. They were actually quite roomy. And that is in part because when I blocked it, I was sure to stretch them out as far as I could because I didn't want them to be too snug on him. But overall, perfect fit. I couldn't be happier. I was really, really pleased with it. And as it's getting colder in Sydney now, apparently he's been wearing it pretty much every night to stay warm. So that's just, you can't ask for more than that. I think if you've knit for someone else and it fits them well and they like it and they wear it, I mean, that's the trifecta really. So. I'm very, very grateful for that. But back to my moody fairy shawl. As for the cables, so I followed the pattern and I did think it was a bit strange how they were knitting up. Um, so I'll show you how they're kind of in these lines. And I thought, I mean, if you're gonna do a cable, it seemed like a odd choice just to have them running that way. But I thought, well, I'm not the designer. Where do I get off thinking <laughs> that I know better about pattern design than she would? But I did think it was an odd choice. Um, I didn't really understand why, especially as at the bottom, they do run in sort of opposite directions. You can see right there. But then as I was finishing off this section, they started running kind of above each other, like a duplicate. And I sort of thought, oh, maybe that's how it's meant to look. But then I got to the very end of the section and thought, oh, that looks really cool. It's sort of like an S sort of a shape, this one here how they're kind of running in like that. And then I realized that's what it's meant to look like. <laughs> that's what these cables are meant to be. They're meant to be like a swirling kind of like snakes. I don't know how that went wrong on my end. Um, I can actually see the original mistake I made on those last rows that caused it to be the correct way. So is it just here? Both of these are going a left facing when they actually, that should be like, that's right, that's left. 
that's also, oops, that's also left, but it should have been right. And that was a mistake I made that then has corrected it to doing the shape that it should. Now, have I made a huge mistake and the cables don't look how they should? Yes, absolutely. I've knit it wrong. I don't know how that happened, but it happened and it's not ideal. Am I going to rip back? Absolutely not. This was almost the death of me. I am not doing this again. <laughs> no way, no way in hell. I'm getting a bit hot. So there's no way I'm going to knit back to the slip stitch pattern to do that again. Look, it's at a distance. It's a shawl. It's going to be wrapped. There's no, no, no way. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Can't do it, won't do it. <laughs> so I'm on to the next section. Um, I will start that, which will be, I believe, a two color brioche that I'm going to use the light blue and the dark blue for. So I think that'll be a really nice contrast. Just very simple two color brioche sort of rib effect. So yeah, so that's that's how the Moody Fairy is going. I think now I've gotten past this cable section, the brioche will fly by. I personally love brioche. It's one of my favorite stitches or knitting techniques or whatever you want to call it. I think it's got a really beautiful rhythm where it kind of reminds me of being on a boat on the ocean that there's sort of like this up down kind of, I don't know, it's got, it's got a really nice rhythm to it. And I think it was funny because I, I'm not sure if I've told this story before about brioche, but I knit a headband for my mother as a gift and I just took the pattern, it was a free pattern, it was really simple and it was in brioche and I didn't know it was brioche and I knit it and it was easy, I didn't make any mistakes, it was perfect, it turned out exactly how I wanted and she loves it and it looks really nice on her. It's only later that I found out that it was brioche and then it's only later I guess I sort of heard all that rhetoric around brioche of it being really difficult and people not liking it and then all of a sudden I realized oh wait I knit that and that wasn't difficult and I actually really loved it so I feel very grateful for that because I think had I not tried that if I'd heard all those attitudes about brioche I probably would have been quite put off and I think I had that a bit with color work I did have a lot of hesitation to start because I'd heard a lot of people talking about how difficult it is to um, maintain your threads as in like in regards to keeping your floats and not being not knitting too tight and having good gauge and I don't know I just was so put off about the idea of doing color work and how to catch a float so it's not too long and I really overcomplicated it and then as soon as I started it was fine it was like not scary at all and I felt so silly for having yeah for having that reservation or thinking that it was making it a bigger deal than it needed to be. Um, I think sometimes ignorance really is bliss. If you just go into things and just try it, I think that's the best way. That's the best thing you can do. Um, and don't let anyone else tell you what's hard and what's not because everyone's different. Um, in the same way I just said, like I find brioche quite intuitive and very simple. I hate cables. And there's gonna be people who are the opposite of that, who love cables. They will cable anything they can get their hands on, but will not touch brioche. So our brains work differently. I don't have a cable brain, which, you know, what are you going to do? If anyone has any suggestions as to, I don't know, how to make cables more enjoyable, I think what really puts me off about them, aside from the issues with tension, is I find that they slow me up. I hate the thing of having to take the needle, the stitches off the needles, you know, put it either side, then put them back on, and I just feel it's so cumbersome and it just feels like it really slows me down and I don't have a rhythm with it. It feels really disjointed. And I have seen those techniques of how to knit without using a cable needle, but once again, I think because I am such a tight knitter, I really run the risk of once I take those needles the stitches off the needles that they're going to start to unravel and I can't really get them back on. I think it works better if you've definitely works better if you've got a looser gauge. So any suggestions would be greatly appreciated because I do want to try and love cables more. I don't want to pass this judgment on them because of this one experience I had. So cable lovers out there, please let me know. Is there anything I can do or is it just, it's just how it is. Uh, so that is my moody berry. It is really wanting to curl up on itself. Maybe if I do it this way. Very happy with it. I also think that this length could make you know 
quite a nice scarf. A little bit Audrey Hepburn, a little bit, you know, something something. I don't know. So, with that said, that's pretty much everything for this week. Now that I don't have a 9 to 5 job, um, which will be taking up a lot of my time, or was taking up a lot of my time, I hope that I'll be able to put out content um, on that more frequent basis. I did think originally once a week was maybe a bit much, just because I'm not the fastest knitter and I am doing slightly larger projects at the moment, so I don't know how you feel about it, but for me it felt like maybe I was probably kind of boring to anyone, any returning viewers because there wasn't crazy amounts of progress or there wasn't anything super new to share. But let me know what you think. Um, if you don't mind seeing repetition, then, you know, great. <laughs> but otherwise, I think um, going forward, maybe every week or every fortnight, every fortnight's definitely more achievable, but I'm not sure. We'll just see, we'll see. You know, I may end up having so much to cap you up on. Now I've got more free time. Which I'm very excited about. I haven't been able to stop smiling. I did record this video uh, probably uh, sometime last week before I had left my job and I'd still been doing all the training and I had to re-record it because I just seemed so tired and absolutely no energy to me whatsoever. It was kind of like that kid, is it Goop or something like that from The Incredibles? I'll put just a photo, maybe if you know what I'm talking about. I felt like him. And I watched back at the footage and I was going to try and edit it, but I realized like no amount of editing is going to change that low energy. <laughs> like, it was just bleak. <laughs> so hopefully this video is a little bit more cheerful, a little bit more, you know, the caffeination I think is probably showing better in this one. So until next time, take care and I will speak to you very soon. Enjoy all your knitting and anything else that brings you joy. Bye. <laughs>